Tom's gonna go for it. The water's only six or seven feet deep. Better confirm he's in four-wheel drive. <laughs> and gonna hang on for that first bump. I can't believe we made it. Is that what it is? So we'll be a lot lighter when we come out. All right. We are here. And if they want to mess with us, they got to come over the creek to do it. So we're here looking after the endangered cobra. Lily of Taylor Creek. I'd leave it running for a little while because it got pretty wet under there. Nice job, Tom. Nice job, Dave. <laughs> And the trail is blocked by this huge burned tree. Huge. That's um five feet right there to where my hand is. Five feet. It's just the side of it. There's the stump. The stump is, what do you think? Six feet? Easy. At least six feet in diameter. Here it is from the other side. So the roots are burned out. It's burned all the way through the stump and all the way through the roots. So Tom's Tom's hitting the hitting the ground right here where I'm pointing. He's hitting the ground. It looks like ground, but the but the bar goes all the way down because there's a burned root under there, a huge burned root. So that huge burned root has probably been there for a long time. So we should dig it out and we should be able to get something approximating some virgin gravel from under these burned roots, I would think. And we have the sluice box set up down in the creek bed and we're filling it up with buckets, semi-classified. And then we're taking it down and throwing it in the little sluice box, see what we get. One more reason we didn't get the gold would be because we didn't break up the clay. The sluice box that Tom brought has no carpet in it. It's got just rib, just um, rib mat, sawtooth mat. That's it. What'd you have to use my name for? I found it. Did you? No. <laughs> anyway, we're digging down behind that tree. And pulling this material out and getting as deep as we can and you know it still looks like red loam so we're not we're not to the river gravel yet it's doing the best we can 
to do a legitimate sample. There's a ditch right here, just above the creek. Ditch goes back, back a ways, and then it connects to another ditch, which goes out across there. So that ditch uh, we were looking at is right over there, and then here's where the ditch splits off and comes down along here, and we're gonna we're gonna trace that out and see where that water was going. So obviously it wasn't being used here because if it was, they would have um, brought the water in a ditch way uphill to generate pressure. So because this ditch is at the same level as the creek, pretty close, we know this water is going somewhere else to mine. The water that flowed in this ditch once upon a time. This looks like tailings here. All subangular tailings, meaning they came from the mountainside. They're not not river rounded. I don't see any river rounded gravel at all. Down here I see a little bit a little bit of rounded gravel. A couple pieces look like they've been tumbled. But it's definitely all angular hillside. No very little rounded stuff, which is and you know what? We want to see rounded river rock. Rounded river rock from another age, even though, you know, we're probably not going to see the original formation. Trust me, the rocks will still be round and smooth. So we're still looking. It's actually harder to set this machine up than it is to operate it. We should really only need to um, get the water into that test port. It should pump from there, should prime from there, we'll see. Pretty much all exposed bedrock. All the way down that north side. So I would definitely say that was a good place to go high banking with a metal detector, if you know what I mean. Anywhere on that bank and on the bedrock would be a great place for nugget shooting. So we'll put that on our note of, pre of future activities. So we um, we basically spent all day coming down here, sampling, setting up the machine, fixing some problems with the trommel because I, I replaced some parts, but they were parts that were you know, available 15 years later, not exactly the same. So I had to I had to do a little re-engineering on that. And then we're set up here. That's a piece of bedrock right there. Smaller piece there. There's some more bedrock right here. So basically I'm going to build a wall of dirt and gravel behind the nozzle, downstream of the nozzle, and then we're going to expose the bedrock and just keep exposing the bedrock up the hill right behind this bedrock feature. So we see rounded rounded rock, very similar rounded rock in the creek. That's what we want to see. We know the bedrock is close and after I've uncovered a good bit and had a look at how these larger rocks 
these cantaloupe sized rocks and larger size and softball and volleyball sized rocks see how they're laying in there and you'll know if the gravel is virgin or not so we're gonna mine and we're gonna see what happens this was a big tree a big tree that burned and there it is right there the diameter on that tree near the base five feet and there's another big tree there and another one there and you know those trees those trees burned but they didn't burn all the way through they're still alive though so I'd be worried about the trees that were dead burned all the way through coming down out here this is probably not a safe place to be in a windstorm blizzard or any other kind of inclement weather because there's a lot of big trees that are burned through at an unknown amount and there's roots that are burned all the way through so yesterday um, we um, found one of those big roots that had been burned all the way through and we checked below it and underneath way too many feet of red loam we did find river gravel is what is under there is it virgin material is it tailings piles so it's a bedrock been cleaned there before I gotta wonder when I see the size of these trees but I admit I do not know how old these trees are they're definitely you know four and five and six foot diameter trees but how old that correlates to I just don't know Tom's got the technique down with the rake. I'm going to turn the bypass water down a little bit. started today at 11.30 and there's our hole right there not too shabby some of the gravel is cemented tighter than other parts some of the stuff on the bedrock definitely some of the material right on top of the bedrock was definitely put there by stream action. It's not somebody's old tailing. So we haven't cleaned up yet. We're not going to clean up until tomorrow at noon.
Wednesday morning. Here's our hole. It's pretty good size. Um, the engine shows six hours runtime. All those rocks look like they're laying the right way on top of the bedrock to be virgin material. This side over here seems to be a little bit looser, possibly because all the roots from the tree have grown down through the gravel and pushed it apart a little bit.